PCRET's main capability lies in solar photovoltaic development, the feather in their cap being a research center which they inherited from the National Institute of Silicon Technology. The research center installed PV cell and panel manufacturing machines in the year 1986. This is polysilicon and this polysilicon has to be converted to silicon crystals over here. This is the first step in the creation of a solar cell. How is it done? We'll see. The input for this machine is purified polysilicon imported from Germany and China, costing between $100 to $200 per kilogram. It can be produced locally with rice husk and silica sand, both abundant in Pakistan. But the only thing needed is the capability to convert them into purified polysilicon. The crystal growth machine needs 25 to 30 hours of continuous operation to produce 20 kilograms of silicon crystal ingot, which is enough for making 1000 solar cells. But due to continuous load sharing, 25 to 30 hours is impossible these days. The silicon ingots produced by this machine are then cut into thin plates which are the actual silicon wafers. It's a quite a sort of knowledge intensive technology, at the same time it's a cost intensive technology. So the private sector is not coming right away. So the public sector has to take the lead in this direction till the market is developed up to the extent that the private sector takes over. These wafers are then diffused and printing of the circuitry is done on them. This is a silicon wafer on which screen printing has been done. Now this screen printed wafer is brought in the lamination lab where the first thing which is done on this is the tabbing of copper strips. Now these copper strips are tabbed over here and then these wafers are brought in over here so that they can be joined and a bunch can be made. Now this bunch is then taken to the assembling session. Here you can see assembling is being done and it is protected by EVA sheets and Tedler sheets. This is done for the protection process of these wafers as they are very delicate. After assembling, these things are taken into the lamination machine. Now we have already put one inside this machine. Let's see what is the outcome. Sir, please open it. Please open it, please. This is the final outcome. The final output is then tested under artificial sunlight at different temperatures before it can be installed at the rooftop of a village home. PCRET uses them in their own village electrification projects. In these last uh, six, seven years, we have electrified about four villages, uh, eight villages, uh, electrified uh, through photovoltaic in the Balochistan uh, province. The AEDB also has its own village electrification program. They import PV panels and install them in such off-grid villages. There will be close to 8,000 villages in Sindh and Baluchistan, which will probably not get electricity in the next 15-20 years because of their remote locations, because of the small sizes, because of other um, uh, logistic reasons. Uh, that have come to us and we have begun to, to electrify them using solar photovoltaics. So far, we have done about 4,000 villages, 3,000 of them, so 4,000 houses. Their village electrification program started in the year 2004 in Narya Khoria village, around 25 kilometers from Islamabad. I traveled to the village, hoping to find the houses electrified. <laughs> ਬਿਜਲੀ there are many villages in our country which are electrified by the program of the government of Pakistan, like this one, Narya Khoria, 
near Rawalpindi. And the organizations which conduct such sort of programs actually feel very proud of their achievements that they have electrified so many villages in just a span of say four or five years. But now when I'm here and I'm having a look at the state of the project now, I've got just one question to ask. When will our government and the organizations be serious about the future of these children like Abu Bakr Siddiq who are waiting here for electricity?